Select and learn with STV. Greetings to our dear viewers of STV. Um, my name is Joshua Waiswa, teacher of social studies. We last stopped when we were looking at explorers, and we are looking at explorers. Explorers, there are very many. We looked at John Speakey, Dr. David Livingstone, and the Martin Stanley. We are still looking at more and more explorers. James Bruce, this was also an explorer and the first people, white man, to see Lake Turner. He was the first, first explorer or white man to see Lake Turner and the blue nile and the blue nile by description on your map lake tana it's in ethiopia lake tana it's in ethiopia it's in ethiopia on the map of east africa Assuming that's the map of East Africa. On the map of East Africa, we have Ethiopia borders Kenya to the north. So we have a lake here, not Lake Trukana, Lake Kodi, Lake Tana. Lake Tana is the source of the Blue Nile. Blue Nile. Blue Nile joins White Nile. Blue Nile, but the source is around here. The source of the Blue Nile is Lake Tana. Lake Tana is in Ethiopia. It was first seen by a white man in the names of James Bruce, not Jaja Bruce. James Bruce. So was the first white man to see Lake Tana. I have said Lake Tana it's in Ethiopia. And it's the source of the Blue Nile. It flows towards it and it joins River Nile. However, the source of the Blue Nile is Lake Tana. We have two lakes. We have Lake Trukana and Lake Tana. For Lake Trukana, it's in Kenya. And Lake Tana, it's in Ethiopia. And Lake Tana is the source of the Blue Nile. This was James Bruce. He explored that. Let's go to another Rebman. Johan Johan Rebman. This Johan Rebman also was the first white man to see was the first white man to see mountain Kilimanjaro mountain Kilimanjaro it's found or it's located in the country of Tanzania the country of Tanzania this is where mountain Kilimanjaro is geographically located around there I told you in the beginning, jo Joseph Thompson saw mountain Elgon. Then this mountain Kilimanjaro, we have, was first seen by Johann Rebman. When Johann Rebman, when Johann Rebman was there, he influenced the lives of the Chaga. And the Chaga people liked them, liked him. The Chaga people liked him as he was there. He was the first white man to see mountain Kilimanjaro. That was Johann Rebman. He did very many things. I say he influenced the lives of Chaga who liked him because of his kindness. The Chaga people liked him.
for your case, the Chaga live on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in East Africa. Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in East Africa. And it's a volcanic mountain. It is a volcanic mountain. Which mountain was formed as a result of volcanicity? Its highest peak crosses the snow line. And the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro is Peak Kibo. Is Peak Kibo. Peak Kibo is the peak of Mount, or rather, the highest peak of Mount Kilimanjaro. Also, Peak Kibo crosses the snow line. Peak Kibo crosses the snow line. It's snow capped. Mount Kilimanjaro is also snow capped because its peak crosses the snow line. They always ask a similar question How are the Chaga of Tanzania similar to the Bagishu of Uganda? In terms of ethnicity, ethnicity to in terms of in terms of ethnicity, in terms of economic activities, and let's say in terms of settlement. In terms of a settlement, this is Bagisu, Bagisu of Uganda, Bagisu of Uganda, and the Chaga. And the Chaga of Uganda, I mean, and the Chaga of Tanzania, in economic activities, both are farmers who are growing Arabica coffee, or both grow Arabica coffee on the mountain slopes, since these mountains have the fertile volcanic soils. In terms of a settlement, both are settling on the slopes of mountains. Both are settling on the slopes of mountains, ethnicity, both are Bantus. That's the way how these guys, they are similar in terms of ethnicity, both are Bantus, economic, both are growing Arabica coffee, and settlement, both are settling on the slopes of mountains. This is the way how the Bagishu are similar, the Bagishu of Uganda, similar to the Chaga of Tanzania, who are living on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro and the Wagishu living on the slopes of Mount Elgon. Let's see another group. We have this man, Count Tereki. Count Tereki. Count Tereki was also an explorer. And he was the first white man to see Lake Trukana. He was the first white man to see Lake Trukana. To see Lake Trukana. This Lake Trukana, it's here. Lake Trukana. It's in Kenya. It's in Kenya. It's a Rift Valley Lake. It's a Rift Valley Lake. It's a Rift Valley Lake. It was formed as a result of faulting. The former name, the former name for this lake, Lake Trukana, was known as Lake Lake Ludrov. The former name of Lake Trukana was known as Lake Ludrov. Lake Ludrov, these are the questions they ask about Lake Trukana. The former name for Lake Trukana was Lake Ludrov. It was first seen by Count Tereki. This Count Tereki, Lake Trukana, this way it's located. I told you it's a Rift Valley Lake. So it was first seen by this man, the name of Count Tereki.
Another one, another one. Let's look at Johan Ludwig. Johan Ludwig. Johan Ludwig Kraft. Johan Ludwig Kraft. He was the first white man to see mountain Kenya. To see mountain Kenya. Was the first white man to see mountain Kenya. This is mountain Kenya. Mountain Kenya in Kenya. Mountain Kenya for your case is also a volcanic mountain. It was formed as a result of volcanicity. Its highest peak is Peak Bastian. Bastian is the highest peak of Mount Kenya. This mountain Kenya the people who are occupying this area, they are known as the white settlers. The white settlers, they occupied that land. When they occupied this land, they dragged away all the Kikuyu citizens who were living on these mountains because of the fertility of the soil. Now, as I talk today, the white settlers occupied the fertile soils of the Kenyan islands. And they established diary farming. Diary farming in Kenya. Today, as I talk, Kenya is one of the leading producers of milk, of milk because of its diary farms. It has these farms, so they are producing large quantities of milk. The white settlers are the ones who established these farms. The lead of these white, white settlers who established diary farming in the Kenyan islands was Lord Baron. Lord Baron Delmaya. Master the spellings. They, um, they can ask a question. Who established diary farming in the Kenyan highlands? This was Lord Baron Derimaya. And Lord Baron Derimaya was one of the leaders of the white settlers who occupied the Kenyan islands. Who occupied the Kenyan islands. They are doing well in farming. Like there is a full big district in Kenya called the Kericho district. Kericho district is one of the leading districts that are leading, which is leading. Kenya is the leading producer of tea in Africa. The leading producer of tea in Africa, even beyond East Africa. We are producing our tea in Mkwano, Kasaku, but we cannot compete with them. Kenya, the Kericho district of Kenya is a, a is all, is a district which is producing tea. They may ask this question. Name the major cash crop that is grown in the Kericho district. That is tea. We are on Rod Baron Derimaya and we are on Dr. Ludwig Kraft. And as we are going, we shall see that again Ludwig Kraft was a missionary. Was a missionary who spread Christianity in East Africa or rather in Africa. He spread Christianity by establishing the first mission station called Rabbi Pia. Rabbi Mpia in Kenya, near Mombasa. So how was Rabbi Mpia important? We are going to see. It helped people to learn how to write and read the religious books. It helped people to learn and to learn how to read the religious books. So let's look at another person apart from another explorer.
this was have also that man, Dr. Sicha. Uh, for this, also was the first white man to see Lake Naivasha. Lake Naivasha. Lake Naivasha, this lake is found in Kenya, still under the Rift Valley lakes in Kenya. We have very many Rift Valley lakes in Kenya. Rift Valley lakes, we have Lake Naivasha, Lake Balingo. I told you Balingo. This Lake Balingo was first seen by this white man in the names of Joseph Thompson. After seeing Mount Elgon, also he saw Lake Balingo. It's in Kenya. We have Lake Magadi. Lake Magadi. We have Lake Trukana. Lake Trukana, Lake Magadi. We have Lake Nakul. Lake Nakul. All of these lakes, they are in Kenya. For your own reference, own remembrance, we look at Lake Magadi. Lake Magadi, these are the products, and the question is they ask from Lake Magadi. Products got from Lake Magadi. We have salt and soda ash. Soda ash. Salt is used for human consumption, is good from Lake Magadi. Apart from Lake Katwe, another lake in East Africa where we get salt, that is Lake Magadi. Le soda ash is also another mineral which is made from Lake Magadi. And this soda ash is used in the making of glasses. So the glasses, we see, they are made out of soda ash. Which lake is doing that? Lake Magadi. And it's a Rift Valley lake, which was formed as a result of faulting. It was formed as a result of faulting. Then we have, they say, this lake Trukana. It's helping the Trukana tribe. So they are doing there, as they are rearing their animals, it's located in the semi-desert area in the northeastern part of Kenya, and that area, it's a semi-desert. It's hot and dry. So it provides water to these pastoralists, to these pastoral tribes. So they take their animals to take water, and there are some pasture for their animals to eat. Now we have Lake, Tru, Lake Nakuru. Lake Nakuru in East Africa is a game park and whereas is a lake. It is famous for all oh, its well-known flamingo. Flamingo birds. Or oh, it's a flamingo sanctuary. It's a flamingo sanctuary. They always ask this question. What is Lake Nakul famous for? Lake Nakul, Lake Nakul in Kenya is known or is famous for flamingo birds. These are the most important species that also attract many tourists to go and see them. It's a sanctuary like a home of the birds. Another explorer we have Lud talked of Ludwig Craft. This Ludwig Craft, so Kilimanjaro, Counter Tereki, discovered Lake Naivasha. This lake. It's also, these lakes are in the eastern arm of the Rift Valley. They are in the eastern arm of the Rift Valley. I say that Rift Valleys were formed as a result of faulting. The same applies to the lakes. If the Rift Valley was formed as a result of faulting, also the lakes in it, they were also formed as a result of faulting. After having seen that these explorers, Let's see effects of the coming of explorers. 
effects effects of the coming of explorers explorers in Africa effects of the coming of explorers in Africa most of them they were positive and others were negative what were the effects or result after the when these explorers came i told you in the definition these were the people who came from who left their country to come to another country or other continent to find or search for information so these were one of the effects the positive one africa was known to the outside world africa was known to the outside world. They never knew that Africa is existing, but as a result of the coming of these explorers, they knew that Africa is there. It was as a result of the reports these explorers made or wrote, and they were taken to their home country, and they understood that now Africa is also a, country, is also a continent with its people. Another one. They renamed, they renamed physical features. They renamed the physical features in Africa. Most of these names we are seeing, they were named by these explorers. They renamed. We, these features had our local names, like I saw, like Victoria have being Naluvale, River Nile, being Kira. The local name of River Nile is, we call it Kira. K I I R A is its local name. But when John Speak came, he named it as Nalubari. We saw when Sir Samuel Becca came, he named Lake Muitanzige as Lake Albert. He named Lake Muitanzige as Lake Albert. By so doing this, they named the physical futures. They renamed physical futures. Another one. These explorers, they opened way for the coming of missionaries. They opened the way for the coming of the missionaries. When they came, they opened, at times they used this word, they paved to pave is to open a way. They open the way for the coming of the missionaries. My dear viewers, it was as a result of the explorers and the reports they took. We saw, Sir, we saw Henry Martin Stanley writing a letter on behalf of Kabaka Mutesa I to call the missionaries to come to Uganda. The reason why Mutesa I wanted to bring the missionaries to Uganda, they wanted to spread the word of God. And Mutesa I also had his personal interest. He wanted to get guns, which guns could be used to fight against his enemies. And I told you these enemies are the Banyoro, and that, uh, they were the Banyoro and the Ba and the Toro and the Bunyoro. They were his enemies. So he had that much as they wanted to teach these people how to read and write. And also, they wanted also guns for him. So who was that one? Sir, I mean, Kabaka Mutesa One. He's the one who invited these missionaries. I told you how the letter was taken, how they wrote, 
and it was taken to Europe and it happened in there, the newspapers. So it was published and the missionaries started coming. Who did that? The other explorers. Explorers, they opened the way for the coming of these missionaries. Another effect of the coming of these explorers Trade routes were developed. Trade routes were developed. As a result of their coming, there was the trade routes emerged. They grew up. The routes they were using, they became very important ways or highways. Where also other, these other railways, railways were constructed. We saw one this explorer in the names of Dr. David Livingstone, who promoted the construction of the Uganda Railway. He brought that construction by when he did when he moved across from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, it was then the railway line they were developed, different routes. Hence trade routes were developed as a result of the coming of these people. Uh, those were some of the effects of the coming of these explorers to Africa. Coming of the explorers to Africa. Let's go and look at the problems that were faced by these explorers in Africa. As I come back, we shall start and look at the problems faced by these explorers in Africa. Let's go for a short break. Welcome back from that session. We have seen the effects of the explorers to the African continent. Trade routes were developed. Africa was known to the outside world. Physical features were renamed. Now we, let's go and look at the problems faced by the explorers in Africa. Problems faced by explorers in Africa. Problem number one, poor transport and communication, poor transport network, poor transport network and communication. Poor transport network and communication or transport network and communication. Since there were no proper roads, since there were no proper means of communication, as when they came, they faced such challenges. The forests were very thick. There were no good roads. So they were just penetrating into the thick forests. So communicating with their friends in Europe, it was very hard. By then, technology was very down. So they faced that poor transport. Another one, language barrier. Language 
language language barrier they had a problem of language barrier these were the people who are not familiar with the local languages at times africans mis africans misinterpreted them like i told you our the nile because the other local people around the river nile they told him titwi denied that is in Lusoga, meaning that they never knew that river now John speak just carried that hey, this is river nile so there was also that problem that they could not communicate with the natives as a result they were not familiar with the local languages they faced the problem of the hostile tribes hostile tribes these hostile tribes for example igi nandi and masai the nandi people and the masai these tribes are very hostile the nandi could not allow these white people to pass through their land one of the nandi rebellion in kenya for them there is one of their chief dreams that the white ghosts are going to pass out are going to pass through our land and when they, the railway line was brought, these people saw they were a problem. They never allowed the railway line to pass through their land. This what happened. One chief dreamt that a long snake is going to pass through their land. And this snake will be giving out smoke. So he mobilized his people. And they were in a great fear. And the longer snake they were referring to the railway line. The smoke, the smoke from that longer snake was the train. So they were very suspicious and they never also allowed the railway line to pass through their land. Also, they were a problem during the construction of the Uganda Railway. These were hostile tribes. They could even eat people. They could kill whenever because these white for them they were black. Now once they see they saw this white man, they could even nickname them as the white ghosts, which wasn't true. That was their that was their only color. As for us in Africa, we are black. So that was also another problem faced by these explorers as they were doing their work. Another problem famine was also another problem. They lacked enough food or rather lack of enough food supplies. Lack of food supplies. Even medicine. The organization that sponsored these explorers, for example, we had the Royal Geographical Society, the RGS, which sponsored most of the explorers in East Africa. We had the UMCA, the UMUKA, University Mission is in Central Africa. This one sponsored University Mission is in Central Africa. It's the organization that sponsored Dr. David Livingstone. Dr. David Livingstone was sponsored by Womoka University Mission in Central Africa. Then RGS, the Royal Geographical Society, it sponsored the explorers like the John, the John Speak, the Sas, the Sas Samuel Baker, the Henry Martin Stanley, and the other explorers in East Africa. They were sponsored by the RGS, which is the Royal Geographical Society. But time came and they ran supply. Since they were very far, to supply food to them, it was a very hard task. So, famine is believed to have also attacked these people. They also faced this problem of tropical diseases. Tropical
tropical diseases tropical diseases tropical 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 diseases diseases within the tropics tropical region tropical diseases these are diseases within that affect they were diseases within the tropics when we talk of tropics on our map if that is our globe we have these lines and that major line this is the zero degrees the up here we have tropic of cancer down here we have tropic of capricorn this region between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn is what we call the tropical region so there were some diseases within these tropical regions for example igi diarrhea diarrhea diseases they were affected by diarrhea two dysentery you will define these words very well in your in your science dysentery with blood this one watery stools diarrhea so they were faced with such tropical diseases we had also the jiggers jiggers they also affected these people so they had problems of tropical diseases the tropical diseases that were affecting these people within the interior of africa when they came they also became victims of these diseases so they were also attacked another problem faced by these explorers as when they came to africa they were also challenged with the harsh climatic conditions of africa harsh weather conditions they were affected with the harsh weather conditions the weather condition is were very harsh for example too much sunshine the too much rainfall the strong wind so at times the climate couldn't favor them could not favor them hence being one of the problems these explorers they faced as a result when they were coming to africa to find out more info mission understand this not this carefully in primary 7 they always ask that this was the university mission in central africa it sponsored that it was mainly in central africa the nandi were problem communication food supplies the diarrhea diseases and the harsh weather conditions as human beings they faced other other challenges might know uh, and as a result, let's go to another group of Europeans who came to Africa. And this group, we are going to look at, we have finished explorers. We have mentioned many and many explorers who came to Africa and their contribution towards Africa. Let's go and look at another second group of europeans who are the missionaries missionaries by definition who is a missionary who is I told you the explorers are the one that opened the way for this second group. I told you that explorers were the first group of Europeans to come to Africa. Then after they are coming, they opened the way for this second group who are the 
missionaries. Missionaries. Who is a missionary? A missionary is a person. A missionary is a person who live his or her country to go to another country to spread the word of God. A missionary is a person who leaves his or her country and goes to another country to spread the word of God. These were godly people. When they came, they came to spread the word of God. Remember in Africa, we had our religion. Which religion was the African traditional religion? We were believing in local gods, or rather the smaller gods of different kinds. Well, they could see a very big tree, they start praising that tree. They could see a lake, they praise the lake. So, so these people, they came in the umbrella of preaching, or rather spreading the word of God. One of the reasons for the coming of these missionaries to Africa, they came to spread the word of God. Two, they came to stop slave trade. They came to stop slave trade. They came to stop slave trade. Select and learn with STV. We are looking at reason is for the coming of the missionaries and we said they came to spread the word of god being christians that was one of their major aim of spreading mm -hmm. the word of god in africa i told you before they are coming christianity wasn't there was not there However, understand this, the first foreign religion was Islam. Then Christianity came as a result of the coming of these missionaries. Point number two, they came, another reason why these missionaries came, they came to stop slave trade. The buying and selling of human beings in Africa, they had already had it earlier that there was slave trade which was going on in Africa. So they came in order to stop this bad trade or the nasty trade in Africa. They preached against their preaching, converted the people, converted the very many people who were practicing that. And they, get, they got new that in fact slavery was inhuman according to that. Bible. So they changed their souls. And number three, why they came? They came to introduce to introduce formal education. They came to introduce formal education. To teach people how to read and write. So this formal education, it, the formal education, actually before the coming of these missionaries, we had informal, informal education, which never, it never, it, ne, it, it, it did not require books. People even were not going into classes. So homes were the schools, fireplaces were the schools, and hunting grounds, or rather the, grain, the grazing grounds, those were the schools. It was more of practical than 
theory. But as a result of the coming, one of their reasons why they came, they wanted to introduce that form of education, of teaching people in Africa how to read and write. Imagine if they never came, we could not be learning. The things we are studying, the English we are speaking, the th what? I don't know how we could socialize if we were very, very illiterate. So it was as a result of their coming that this kind of education was brought onto the African continent. Now people can speak English. Now people can write. Now people can do everything. They can present present themselves, either in writing, or either in spoken, anything, as a result of this formal education. Informal education was the first education in Africa. However, it never, it never, it, 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 there were no using of books. Someone could just talk. It was more of a practical. Parents, our guardians, our elders could just talk and we understand. Now today we have to fill textbooks, we have to fill books, we write counter books, you write, you write, you write. Because of this missionaries. Now some people are saying I wish the missionaries never came. We could not write homework, we could not write classwork. So you could just stay home and enjoy not going to school. I also imagine the level of illiterate we could be if we were, we were not civilized to know how to read and write. Examples, examples of missionaries who came to Africa. Examples of missionaries. Examples. Examples of these missionaries who came to Africa. There were very many groups of missionaries who came to Africa. And by names, we had Ludwig, Johann Ludwig Kraft. was the first missionary to come to East Africa. And when he came, he spread the Christianity. How did he spread the Christianity? He established, he established the first, first mission station at Rabbi Mpia. Not the spelling. Ludwig Kraft established the first mission station at Rabbi Mpia. Two. He translated. He translated the English Bible Bible into Swahili. He translated the English Bible he translated the English Bible into Swahili. As a result of his coming Ludwig Kraft did this. He established the mission station 
the first mission station, and that mission station is the one we are calling the Rabai. R A B A I. Mpia. And also, he translated, changed the Bible which was in English, then it was changed to Kiswahili. Remember, the people of Kenya, they speak Kiswahili. Kiswahili language, I told you, it came as a result of mixing the Bantu words and the Arabic words. So for him, he had studied Kiswahili very well and he translated that Bible from English to Kiswahili. And of course, the majority of the people in Kenya, they speak Kiswahili. So it was very simple for them to communicate to those people because the Bible now was in Kiswahili language. This word Rabbi Impia was a mission station. They always ask, how did the establishment of the mission station by ruling craft owe a great importance to the people of East Africa? This mission station, it was like a building or rather a church. And this station, it's, it helped people to know how to read or to learn how to read the religious books. They can ask you such a question. How did the mission station help the people in East Africa. So this mission station, it was like a learning center where these people who are learning, reading, learning Christian literatures, they could go for study, they could go there, they study for lessons. Like I see these young children who are Muslims, who are Catholics, they first teach you religion. You go for those sessions. For young children who are Muslim, you go for the Dalasas. For the Catholics, they go for Karimwes. So that you can understand the Christian or the religious basics. Once, if you don't understand at that stage, it means you may take long to understand them. That's why they had to establish this mission, station in East Africa. To teach people how to read and write and how to interpret messages in the Bible. This is how Rabbi Impia, the first mission station, was of great use to the people of to the people of East Africa. And it helped in the spreading of Christianity. Schools have been shut down for 32 days due to coronavirus pandemic. To keep your kids safe and educated, you don't have to get into your pockets. STV brings teachers to your living room. Select and learn with STV.